Good afternoon, my name is Tiffany. This is Jonathan, Danny, Jason, and Young. And we are here to present NTT Tacoma's venture into the US telecommunications industry. NTT Tacoma is the leading Japanese company of technological, mobile, and data services, owning over half of Japan's cell phone market. In Japan, they set the standards for superior service and technolo technological innovation. We plan to translate this brand and reputation for successful business in the U.S. Now Danny will talk about the environmental overview. Hi, um, so I'm going to talk about a startup with some smartphone statistics to show our smartphones growing trends in the U.S. Um, and according to a study by Comscore, over 45.5 over million uh, people in the U.S. own smartphones in 2010. And it is the fastest growing uh, segment of the mobile phone market, which comprises of 234 million users in the U.S. And according to figures for 2009 released by Gartner, uh, smartphone sales increased over 24% since 2008. And uh, in the second quarter of 2010, smartphone sales increased over 50% since the second quarter of 2009. Um, and according to Morgan Stanley uh, research team, sales of smartphones will exceed those of PCs in 2010, which is approximately over 500 million smartphones. So uh, all these researches are done by uh, experts and professionals. Uh, it's pretty, very credible. Um, and this clearly show uh, uh, the growth in telecommunication industry in the US. And it'd be a perfect time for Tacoma to enter and uh, expand its uh, market share. So uh, economy overview. The US has the largest and most technologically uh, powerful economy in the world with a per capita GDP of $46,400. Smartphone is not a cheap product, and uh, being in a mature market with a high per capita GDP is a good factor for Tacoma to do business in the U.S. And for political system, the U.S. is definitely very stable. And uh, the, one of the advantages of being in a mature market is strong economy and uh, strong political system, which basically means the uh, U.S. has very strong infrastructure, and it, it helps Tacoma to have a more convenient distribution channel. Um, population, U.S. is third largest after China and India, and in terms of um, mobile phone users, U.S. is also third largest after China and India. So as you can see from this, it, it, it is very uh, good sign and many potential and opportunities in the U.S. And culture, in terms of culture, as you can see from a Hofstede's uh, diagram, there are many uh, cultural differences between Japan and the U.S. So uh, one of the implementation that Tacoma can have is investing in human capital, such as hiring expatriates with uh, um, Western culture experience or hiring people with uh, U.S. educational backgrounds and continuously educating people, both Japanese and American culture. Uh, so it, the important key factor here is, to, even though Tacoma is a global firm, it cannot underestimate the importance of culture, culture difference. Next. Um, U.S. definitely uh, the leading industrial power in the world, uh, very active uh, global trader. So uh, Tacoma does not have to worry about uh, uh, trading all this stuff. And uh, legal issue, U.S. has the Telecommunication Act of 1996. This prevents monopoly of the telecommunication market. This allows any business to enter the telecommunication market and compete freely. And here, this uh, applies to both domestic and international firms. Now Jonathan will talk about the competitive assessment. <coughs> so as me, you may know, competition is very fierce in the telecommunications market. It's mostly dominated by corporate giants, and the market share is comprised one-third um, by AT&T, one-third by Verizon, and one-third by other companies such as Sprint, T-Mobile, and other smaller companies. And the competition is based on price and differentiated service. First, we're going to look at AT&T. So AT&T is the second in the industry. It has it owns um, has over 92 million subscribers nationwide, and they have competitive advantage for the recent years because of their exclusive being the exclusive provider for the Apple iPhone. And now, just recently, they introduced the Apple I uh, know the Windows phone. Sorry, and they're strong in their service and large coverage area. And um, although their prices have begun to be less competitive compared to the other providers over the years, and they also have a binding contract 
that is flexible. And next, we're going to look at Verizon. They're the largest um, market share of the industry. They serve over 93 million customers, and they're showing their quality, service, and fast wireless network. And they claim to be the largest 3G network pro provider. And their price points, however, are weak, and their utilization of the CDMA technology, which is a, an embedded chip in the cell phone that doesn't allow you to switch SIM cards basically across cell phones. So that also is uh, one of their weaknesses. And next we're going to look at um, the other companies. So over the course of the telecom development, um, several companies have risen to combat the corporate giants. Companies like Sprint, T-Mobile, Virgin Mobile, Vonage, Boost, Cricket, both of those, um, they provide differenti serv differentiated service and lower price points to combat and that uh, captures the segment of the consumers that are price sensitive. For example, Sprint has a exclusive 4G network, T-Mobile and other companies, they offer at one price with unlimited text and calls. And uh, also a lot of companies like T-Mobile or actually that they don't require contracts. So that allows flexibility for the consumers <coughs> to switch providers. And now Jason will talk about the potential target market. Um, in terms of the potential target assessment, first we have to understand the customers when we are entering into the U.S. market. There are several particular characteristics of the U.S. market, uh, U.S. customers. First, young mobile users tend to buy stylish phones in a range of colors. Also, the popularity of ringtones and locals demonstrates the need for young people to express themselves. But the key thing to learn is to how to effectively understand customers. For example, AT&T understood their customers rather than just promote technology to, to a largely disinterested public. They first spotted the first the new customer segment and identified the characteristics that define the segment such as fashion, music, and then they developed the technology to satisfy those requirements. Also, most Americans only use their cell phones uh, for about like 12, 12 to 18 months before replacing it with their new model. So to Colmo, we, we should be targeting the two major customer segments. The first group is young professionals, the age between 18 to 35, and the second group is international students plus international business people. Um, the, reason, the reason why we are targeting young professionals between age 18 to 35, according to, because according to Comscore.com, in August 2010, just only in the United States, 75 million mobile subscribers ages 18 and older use downloaded applications and 80 million mobile, mobile subscribers use their browser. So we should be targeting them because of their increasing usage of data services. <coughs> among, the, among the various age segments, 18 to 35 is accelerating adopters, representing 47% of the audience. Also, they have very different experiences with their cell phones than older Americans do. Their over feelings their overall feelings towards cell phones are more positive. 32% of the youngest cell phone users say they could not live without their cell phone, compared only with 18% of phone owners ages 35 and older. Two-thirds two, two -thirds of younger cell phone owners say they always have their cell phone on. It's not surprising that the young are also the most likely to use extra cell phone features or they want to acquire whatever interactive media or communications capability, capabilities available to them. Also, the Como should be targeting international students. According to a recent research, the number of international students at colleges and universities in the United States increased by 3% to 607,000 people. So in addition to this, this represents a huge market for Tacoma. So we should be targeting international students due to their need to connect with their family and friends at home. So according to um, the research, 
uh, foreign direct investment in the United States in 2009 total was $152 billion. So the Como should be targeting international business people. So we, because we expect that there will be a lot more international business people doing business in the United States since the massive growth of foreign direct investment within the U.S. However, it's a totally market, it's a totally different market from Japan because the Como targets every single segment in Japan and it covers 85% of the population. The Como should be targeting young professionals, international students, and international business people in the U.S. market since they're also the most likely to use extra cell phone features compared with other segments. So Tiffany is going to talk about the marketing and she's Okay, so therefore we recommend that Decomo set up a wholly owned subsidiary to enter the U.S. market. As we 25% of phones sold are smartphones and 45 